What's going on guys, Hootie here. Welcome back to another video. Today is Situational Awareness Episode 2. If you haven't seen the first one, go ahead and check it out. You can find the link in the top right hand corner of this video or you can find it down in the description below. But in this video, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking a look at a clutch play and how they worked, why they worked, and a couple different options that probably wouldn't have worked if, you know, that person had attempted those options. So. Let's go ahead and dive into this one. This week, we're taking a look at a play from Wardell, actually, from last month's Ignition series. And this clutch play is pretty miraculous, okay? The bomb is down. It actually starts as a 1v or 2v4. It ends up being a 1v3 with Wardell. And he clutches up and actually wins this round with very, very little time to spare. So let's go ahead and take a look. Let's go ahead and watch the clutch play, and then we'll go back and analyze it. One to go, Wardell misses the op shot, and now at this point, you're just gonna try to look for some exits because you're fully blinded. After shot come out, sorry, sorry, bolt line coming through as well. He picks up the Phantom in the first headshot onto AZK. Actually, he's gonna commit into this, putting his smoke in front of the site. There, you still have a dark cloud moving in, a dark cover inside the main site. And somehow that should have connected, and he does connect finally with the ghost. Tapping on the spike, he does get the kill with the frags with that too. Does he have enough time for the fuse once again? And he will. Oh, what so as you guys saw there, Wardell comes up huge for his team and actually wins the round. This is a pretty impressive one. You know, there was a lot of information in that round that he must have had access to from his team. So let's talk about it a little bit. Let's step through. Let's analyze this. Let's talk about potential options. Okay. To start this round off, you can see that Wardell here actually has an operator. Now, there's an option he could have gone with, and that is to hold on to that operator. Now, if he holds on to the operator here, he has an opportunity to potentially get a big kill on someone in garage or somebody peeking him from pillar, but he's going to struggle with the up close fights and he's going to struggle with the actual retake itself if they don't make the mistake of peeking him, which these are pro players. They're going to try and make as few mistakes as possible, right? It's also a 1v3 though, so the enemy team is probably thinking they have this one in the bag with the bomb down already. As you can see, Wardell gets blinded, and he actually goes for the pickup of a rifle because he knows that if he has any chance of winning this round, he's going to need a rifle for this retake. And now at this point, he knows there's one player on the pillar, one player probably close from that flashbang that he just got flashed with, and one player in garage and there's a good chance that he knows that garage player is lit because his teammates have called that out to him now as a pro player he needs to isolate these enemy players and win the fights right he needs to take 1v1s and not allow them to double peek him so the first thing he's going to do is take this challenge down in the lower rope area platform right below him he can isolate this fight very easily. He can peek just that. And if he crouches here, he's not visible from garage or from the pillar player. But as you can see, he does still spray transfer just in case he gets double peeked. And this is really, really smart and really good by him to do the spray transfer, even though it doesn't hit. Because all you know is that garage player or the pillar player might go for the peak on this kill and then he's potentially screwed, right? So he does a spray transfer. It doesn't matter, but it's something that he does. Now from here, he actually has a couple options. I don't think he had many options leading up to this other than potentially keeping the operator. And that probably would have been the wrong play. He doesn't keep the operator. He picks up the phantom. If he keeps the operator, he'd be really lucky to get the kill here on this breach. And then even more lucky if he somehow wins this round by getting the kill on either of these players down here that you can see on the bomb site. But from here, what should he do? So he has a couple options. He stays up here on the balcony. He tries to take a fight on the pillar player, but also is pretty exposed to the garage player because there's not really much you can do up here on the balcony in terms of taking a fight without being exposed from other angles or he can drop down, right? Dropping down where he just killed the enemy player. Now, the problem with dropping down here, if he did do that, if he were to drop down to the ropes here and he did it very loudly, the enemy team would know that he's dropped down. They know he's over here already. If he drops down loudly, they're gonna know he dropped down and they're probably gonna double peek him. So what can you do if you wanna drop down 
and not get double peaked, or you want to hide the fact that you dropped down, right? Well, there's an option there and most players don't realize it, but you'll see a lot of pro players do it. Or a lot of players do this at a higher level as he drops down, right? When he's going to make that foot sound from dropping down, he fires a single shot. Watch. You might think at first glance that this shot was a mistake. He didn't mean to fire this shot, but what he was really doing there was hiding the sound of himself dropping so that he wouldn't hopefully get double peaked. And as you can see, it obviously worked because both of these enemy players in the garage and on the pillar are perfectly capable of wide peeking him 2v1ing and killing him right here. But they don't actually know if he's here. For all they know, that shot was at someone that he thought he saw or trying to bait them out, right? They don't know. So they don't peek. From here, he has a couple options. He can push straight ahead down the lane, potentially peek garage and get a kill or peek the pillar, get a kill, but then also be exposed and tradable from the opposite player. If he comes out and he peeks the pillar player right around the corner here, then he's totally exposed from behind to the person in garage and vice versa. The other option that he has is to actually go to the right here onto the bomb site itself. This is actually the right option because this allows him to isolate that pillar player. The pillar player is not going to know that he's pushing the bomb site if he does it quietly and the garage player is not going to be able to trade that kill. So what's he going to do? He's going to push the bomb site. He actually smokes the garage, which is really smart here as a jet player, because it doesn't really give the comfort to that garage player to push out. If they push there and he's just sitting here holding it, it's a free kill for him. If they don't push, then he doesn't really get information that the player is still in garage, but like that player is still alive. The problem with this garage player is where the bomb is planted, as you'll see in a second here. So he uses that smoke to get onto the bomb site. He sees that the omen has actually smoked the bomb site, which is really good for him because the omen doesn't really know that he's on the bomb site. And since he's using a phantom to spray in here, only silenced weapons spraying into the smoke, there's no tracers. So he doesn't see where the bullets are really coming from. He knows they're coming at him, the omen does, but he doesn't really know where they're coming from. As he pushes into the smoke, actually with a ghost out, which is super risky, by the way, he actually hits one body shot and then a headshot, which is enough to instantly kill the Omen, who has to react because he doesn't realize that the jet is just going to YOLO into the smoke like this. I think this decision by Wardell just to rush into the smoke was like a risk versus reward and I don't have a lot of time type of play. It was his only decision that he could really make. It was the highest risk, but also potentially the highest reward, which is why it was the correct thing to do. If he doesn't push the smoke here, the Omen probably falls back to Pillar, plays time, and Jet loses the round. Wardell loses the round. So as you can see, he gets the kill on the Omen. Now what does he do? Okay, the bomb is planted. He knows the Raze is in Garage. Raze has her ultimate. He knows that. He knows she's going to pop it. The only way she can defend the bomb in time is to pop her ult and shoot it at him. So what's he going to do? He's going to fake the defuse, right? Why wouldn't you? Why don't you just tap the bomb? There's no reason not to tap the bomb because in this case specifically, tapping the bomb is going to force that Raze's hand. She now has to come out. She has to pop her ult. She can't just sit back and play time. She doesn't have a choice. So he's going to pop that bomb. He's going to hit it, right? And all he's going to do is come off and instantly peek that Raze. He is hoping, more than likely it's true too, that she's going to pop her ult and he's going to catch her in the midst of pulling out her rocket and hopefully get a kill. He knows she's tagged. He's hoping that he's going to be able to hit these shots and get this kill. And as you can see, he does just that. He gets the kill just before that rocket actually comes out. So she hits her ult. She throws a blast pack down on the ground. Her rocket isn't even all the way out yet. And she's still flying towards him, hopefully getting there to get a rocket kill. I think in this scenario specifically, the better play for the Rays was not actually to pop her rocket at all. It was just to throw a blast pack as far forward, which she obviously had, as she could towards Wardell, hoping to either knock him back a little bit, not allowing him to peek or hit the shots, and maybe even killing him, seeing as she doesn't really know how much health he has. So he's able to peek her, get that free kill because she's one shot to the ghost, and win this round with the defuse. 
you can tell that this bomb is still diffusible because this outer ring that you see here hasn't started retracting. As soon as it starts retracting, you can no longer defuse the bomb with time left. Since that ring is still there, he knows he can stick this. This was a huge play. And as you saw throughout this round, there were a few different ways that he could have played this or a few different decisions he could have made at least. We're not even talking about his ability usage, right? He didn't really use his abilities other than that one smoke. And if he would have done any of that, if he would have overcomplicated it with ability usage, if he would have made one different decision, it would have meant the round was lost for him and his team. He made all of the right decisions here. He calculated the risk versus rewards and he took the information he had and he used it perfectly. Now, I know a lot of you are going to say, well, he's got crazy aim. He's super high skill. But realistically, the reason he won this round was because he used his brain better than the enemy did. The enemy made some crucial mistakes, right? With the bomb plant position where it was at, Ray's playing in garage in a position where she couldn't trade the omen was a massive mistake. Omen pushing forward into his own smoke and playing within his own smoke at an angle, again, where the Rays could never potentially trade that kill if the jet were to push onto the bomb site, was a huge mistake. And then the breach pushing up onto that rope platform, getting really close to Wardell, giving him the opportunity to single him out and take that gunfight and win it, again, huge mistake. Wardell recognized all of these things and took advantage of those facts, and that's why he won this round. Check out the previous video. You'll see the link on the screen right now. Make sure you hit that sub button. Make sure you hit the follow button. Go over to twitch.tv slash Brian Hootie. Follow me there. I go live three nights a week. I'd love to see you over there if you want to chat more about this kind of stuff. And I'll see you in the next one.